It is post Labor Day. Companies are getting back to work. Was there a big rush into the market before the quarter gets underway and other companies come to market? There was. I thought Ian Lincoln of BMO Markets had a really good analysis of the bond sales that we saw today. He basically said everyone returned from vacation and they tapped into the corporate debt market. And that's why we did see such a big rise in Treasury yields um, today. But he said nothing really to worry about here. We're likely to see that market still remain volatile. But there was nothing too surprising about the fact that yields moved higher when we saw all of these bonds um, selling off. And then, of course, we did see the dollar also moving up higher, which we typically do see when uh, rates move up higher as well. Also, like Annabelle was talking about, that yen moving lower contributed to the dollar strength. And also the services data in China and Europe weakening bodes for the dollar to continue to move up a little bit higher from here. And Emily, we had some interesting key calls from high-profile investors. Yeah, Heidi, I mean, nothing we haven't heard from some of Wall Street's <laughs> biggest bears. Of course, we have Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson and J.P. Morgan's Marco Kalanovic. They are sticking to their bearish calls. Uh, Mike Wilson specifically came out today talking about how the breadth for both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ remains weak, talking about how the rally is really only being led by a few names and the gains have not spread out yet to some of the other names in the index. Of course, he has a S&P 500 price target of 3,900 for the end of the year. We just haven't seen that materialize. He, for a while now, has been calling for a big earnings collapse that's going to break the market. We just haven't seen it quite yet. We still have a few months left to go. Marco Klanvik also coming out today saying that investors should fade the artificial intelligence induced stock market rally. And he also does cross asset strategy at JP Morgan. So he said that he could turn more optimistic on equities if rates do um, begin to fall globally in the near term. His target 4,200, which is below where we are right now on the S&P. But that's just indicative of the spectrum, right? And we have it in the economic sphere as well. We have Goldman now calling for a 15% odds of recession, whereas Bloomberg Economics says it's still at 60%. So we really are seeing a broad diversity of views. But when it comes to, say, rates, is there any sort of coalescing around one particular area for the two-year or the 10-year? Well, I think a lot of people are now coming to terms with the fact that the Fed is likely done. Maybe we'll get one more hike in November, likely a pause in September. And I think the question now is not what exactly is the terminal rate going to be, but when are we actually going to feel the effects of the 500 or more than 500 basis points of tightening? I did an interview with Fidelity International, and they said that within the next two quarters, when companies have to refinance their debt at these higher rates, if they locked in a low rate you know, in 2020 when rates were basically near zero, it's going to be a big shock when they have to refinance at above 5%. So I think people are now starting to really talk about when are we going to see that Fed monetary policy transmission mechanism or the lags in monetary policy start to catch up? And is that actually going to be the catalyst for a recession? Or are we going to have a soft landing? That's still another theory. <laughs>